Now that we know the difference between our four types of sentences in English, we're actually going to write a story using these sentences. Now this is a very deliberately structured type of story. You wouldn't actually write one that you're writing for general purpose in this format, but I'm doing it to make sure, A, to get you to be expressive in your writing, and B, to make sure that you can control these forms of sentences, and that you can keep them in mind, because once you understand it, you don't need to think about it constantly. So this story that you're going to write in is a whole story in exactly 16 sentences. So it's quite short. And it's not only that it's 16 six sentences long, it's actually very specific types of sentences in a very specific order. So the very first sentence in your story is going to be a simple sentence. The second sentence is going to be a complex sentence. The third, of course, will be a compound sentence. And finally, your fourth sentence will be a complex compound sentence. And then you start again with a simple sentence. So you'll actually go through this these four types of sentences four times to get your 16 sentences. Uh, so here's an example that I've put together to give you an idea of how a story like this might work. So here is my simple sentence. Wilberforce and Abernathy left town for the night and went to the movies. Although there's two people, they're only one subject because they're actually doing the same thing. So that is a simple sentence. There's our subject. And what did they do? Which you could replace it with just they. They left town for the night and went to the movies. So that's your simple sentence. Next is your complex sentence. Your complex sentence has a simple sentence in it. It has Wilberforce. What was he doing? He was craving a chocolate milkshake. And then we have this little dependent clause here, the bit that could not stand alone, before the show. And that can be in the middle of your sentence or at the start at the end. And you actually don't even really need that comma, although I like to use them. But it's that little bit of extra information that you tack on. But you could take out of the sentence. But it's, it's adding detail, which is why they're good, the old complex sentence. Next up, this is a compound sentence. So we have two subjects and they're doing different things. This is what makes it a compound. It's basically two subjects, two sentences glued together. So Wilberforce is our first subject and he went into the cafe for the delicious, delicious chocolate beverage. While, and that's our conjunction, we've joined it, Abby waited patiently in the car. So we've got two sentences glued together. That's a compound. Only one more to go. This is our compound complex. This is as difficult as sentences get in English. Back in the car. That's our dependent clause. That's the bit that can't stand alone. Next thing is things were getting a little tense. So the subject there is actually things. And what were things doing? They were a little tense. Um, so were is actually the verb. And they, what were they? They were a little tense. And is the conjunction. And the second sentence is, Wilberforce tried to finish off his shake without making that annoying noise at the end. So that's actually is com that's not a terribly complicated sentence, but it's actually two sentences plus a little comment. You could actually have a variety of little comments in there and it would still be a, com a um, compound complex sentence. And then, of course, we go back to a straight, simple sentence. Abernathy was completely silent. Subject, Abernathy, what was she? Well, she was is the subject. She was completely silent. So just to recap, it's four by four. There's four types of sentences. You'll see each one four times. And that's the task that we'll be writing this week.